In 1918, as the First World War was coming to an end, the principal librarian, W. H. Ifold, embarked on a very active collecting campaign to purchase the diaries and letters of men and women returning to Australia from the war, and that became known as the European War Collecting Project. By the time we reached the camp, we were dead beat. Then we were attached to our barracks, plain wooden barracks and wooden bunks with damp straw racks for mattresses. In our collection here at the State Library, our youngest diarist that we're aware of is Keith Harris, who was 15 years old, and he actually was captured and taken to Germany as a prisoner of war at the age of 15. Then the Huns marched us to the bathhouse, clipped our hair as close as possible. The rest of the hair on our body was burnt off by a chemical-like blue-grey paint. Ifold saw that there was an important need to collect this material for future generations. He's an uncle I didn't know, but know most of, because from a little boy, I was told the story of Uncle Doug. He went in with a commission to the First World War, joined the 13th Battalion, and he was the second wave coming into Gallipoli on that particular night. We recovered 100 rifles and about 25,000 rounds with our little party alone. Douglas Marks' diary follows his life on a day-to-day -day basis right through the war, through his wounding, through the battles. Snow on the ground made my hands very cold and the exertion made me cough up a lot of blood. From here on, things just hazy. He went through both Gallipoli and the Western Front, but he came, he came home. It was a blustery day on the 25th of January 1920 when Douglas Marks came here to Palm Beach with his family. He noticed that a woman was struggling in the surf. So he took off his coat and shoes and dived into the undertow and was lost. Her body recovered, his body never recovered. Nothing is better, nothing is more graphic, nothing is more profound than what you get through personal diaries.